Welcome to the Deadly Addiction channel. I am Joseph F. Alsis, Addiction Master on most social media. I'm going to be talking about an animated show, a cartoon if you will, Transformers War for Cybertron. Now I think they're calling season one Siege, but it is the name of the first episode. Now this is a, I guess, um, well when you look back at it, there's a whole slew of Transformers cartoons. Some are connected to the lore or the history of the toys, some are uh, connected to the history of the comic books and the original Generation 1, as they call it. There was a popular trilogy, I think it's the Prime Wars trilogy, it was done by Machinima, but I believe they closed in 2019. They had a three-part trilogy, and I quite liked it, and... I had a little bit of worry about the new Transformers War for Cybertron because I did a little bit of reading, like I saw things that I read and I was sort of paying attention and I started getting this feeling like, oh, they're going to be short and strung out, meaning you used to the Transformers, uh, the episode is all in one episode, everything is done, you move on, another episode, and sometimes there are two-parters. And like the Prime Wars cartoon and Beast Wars, they were able to do it pretty good with a plot that runs through a season, but it's not always focused on. This was going to be almost uh, part one, uh, six parts, and it tells the story. And in any case, I really liked the show. I was a little surprised. Um, I like the way it's filmed in the sense of the look, the feel of the animation what you're seeing the scale they use i'm okay with it being a little darker than normal and not only visual brightness but its tone this picks up where it's the end of the war on cybertron and if you know about transformers they live for millions of years so i'm not sure what continuity they're going with in a sense but it's a war that's been raging for a long time Optimus has become the leader, Megatron the leader of Decepticons, and it's come to a head. They want Optimus to sign a treaty. He fights for freedom of all sentient beings. And this chapter, which I believe they're calling Siege, is the end of the war on Cybertron. I'm really happy with how they focus on some characters. And even though I'm not happy about other characters that they mess with, it's done well, so I, I, I'm okay with it. It's like, okay, if I was writing the show, fine. I would have done it this way. But at least it's done well. I'm a little uh, weirded out. I thought the original Optimus Prime was doing the voice, and he's not. The um, voice cast is not very familiar to me, in a sense. So I'm not a big, oh, I know all the voice actors, unless it's like Mark Hamill and so on and so forth. There's a pacing to this that I like and maybe it's just I'm in the mood right now for 30 minute part one part two part three like I didn't think I would like it and it really surprised me I went and started watching it with a friend he enjoys it I'm getting ready to watch season two which is Earthrise and I thought I would do this podcast because I really want to do one on Beast Wars which is like probably my favorite and it's a weird story with that because I hated it in the beginning. I was so offended that they turned my automobile, plane, robots into animals. <laughs> and I'll get into that for that podcast. But with the pop, I guess the success or popularity of Machinima's uh, Prime Wars trilogy, Netflix uh, picked this up. It's really good, I believe. And I'm not sure if I could. You know, I don't know. I don't have children, but would I recommend this to kids? And I, I'm going to say yes. It is. There are some visuals that are messed up. And, you know, although it has to do with robots, you're still getting the feeling that these are sentient beings. And this, the weight of the war really impacts them. And unlike the corny campiness of the first 
generation of shows and maybe the continuation because there's been so many. Some are actually made for kids and you can tell by their art. This one, it's got a tone that um, could be a little bit too dark for some people. So that would be a warning, I guess, if that matters to certain people. Um, maybe I'm just in the right time and place in my life where I was willing to accept something that done well. Maybe not the way I would do it. And you get this real dynamic going on between the characters about the war, about decisions they're making. Uh, they highlight um, Jetfire, which is a Decepticon who's seeing the zeal of Megatron and how far he'll go. And I think him and Bumblebee, with the revelation of certain things, I'm not giving spoilers... They sort of uh, revolve around them with Optimus and Megatron, obviously, the leaders who get the respect they deserve in the show. But it's done enough where I, I like the ambience that it brings. It's, it's a stark realization, maybe, that these are... Forget about the fact that they don't have skin, and but you can tell they're sentient... And if you're getting a hint that they've been doing this for millions of years, and maybe the war started for a good reason, you know how this is with history, and like anything, this is a sci-fi twist on it. I'm enjoying this. I was anticipating every episode. Maybe I didn't watch it week to week, and is that element that I'm sort of over the week to week type stuff? But I don't know. I like doing podcasts and. Like I say from time to time, just the opportunity to turn the mic on and just speak my mind on things. And this one, I was a little hesitant on, you know, doing Beast Wars first, because I did Transformers Generation 1, talked about the time of my life, the magic it was when you're a child. Here I am, you know, 49, getting ready to turn 50, and I'm really liking what the show is putting out. Season 2, I'm really anticipating... There are little nitpicks in this show, and that does nothing to impact my enjoyment of the show. Uh, I could like things here and then disagree with certain things here, or a character, but for the most part, the show is really, I think, really doing it well. Uh, I hesitate because of some of the, like, I don't know enough about some of the kitty ones which I watch just for the storyline because I get really involved in learning the lore because now on my I have a I talk about this from time to time but I play uh, online role playing and I use the Roll Die 20 site and it has a deck which I use the Marvel Saga system to role play superheroes and I'll use them from any genre from any brand any company and I also happen to put Transformers in it. And because of the way it works online, where different people are in different time zones and such, I find myself not getting total groups together to play certain things. So, I've been playing Transformers a lot. My friend is um, probably the most consistent player, and I filtered it into my superhero stuff, amalgamating the world. But it allows me to have space adventures and keep it distant from the agents on the earth, let's say, and how I'm mixing all that story together. But as I was saying, so I'll go deep into the comic book lore, and I've been somebody who's loved Transformers over the years, so I've always at least had my eye on it. There's a lot to discuss about um, you know, who started the war, what was the status of the war, uh, Megatron at first was right in doing what he did, and then he went too far, and Optimus had a rise. There's a hint of um, all that throughout the continuity, but it's, I think, a little bit too jumbled for most fans. Hopefully this will be a, a, a new trend, because I think it is staying consistent with the Machinima stuff. Been that focused on the Primes, the original Transformers who birthed the you know, Cybertronians that transforms, that type thing. But if you're going for the original story where 
Autobots had a war. They escaped. They crashed on Earth. Millions of years later, they're reawakened. I don't know if they're going that way. I haven't read anything about Earthrise, which is season two. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not going to be dis- uh, angry or super disappointed if they're not going with that. I wanted to get a little bit more in depth with what they're using because a lot of the um, information you see will tell you from time to time if it's in um, a certain continuity, uh, the Prime or the Toy Trilogy, and they do really in depth stuff. So from that end, I could see where there is a confusion or there's a jumbled history in someone like me who loves Transformers but really needs to dive deep and should you have to. In that, I think this is a good setup. You're seeing the tail end of the war, which is basically what, the beginning of the first genera- of the original TV show. They showed like part one and part two, what was happening on Cybertron, then they crash on Earth, fighting Megatron's ship, they awaken millions of years later. I don't know if they're going to go that route, as I've played the video games too, and there's, again, so much lore that they're taking from third-party sources and crowdfunding things that became popular. It's a little hard to get your ha- a handle on, but I really enjoy what they're doing. I love the look of the show. For some reason, I enjoy the pacing and how they're plotting it out episode to episode. I think it's a little bit of a... You, know, you have to have a talent for writing an episode, having an underlying theme that's really strong. So if you're looking at Optimus deciding we're going to take the all spark and take it off Cybertron and this war, regardless of what happens, because there's no exact hint of what happens when you take the all spark, which is, I guess, the lifeblood of Transformers and Cybertrons, Cybertronians. And he's willing to do that because this war has gotten out of hand. Megatron's on the verge of winning, so on and so forth. And then Earthrise would be what I would assume is crashing on Earth and continuing the war, looking for resources. And its theme is really cool in general, regardless of back in the day it being a cool, campy song, which I still fucking love. And the movie, which was epic and it showed Optimus' death, the continuation on TV. And, in my opinion, probably the best representation, believe it or not, is Beast Wars. It's just a fabulous show. I think this is going to be something to remember. I think it'll probably cement what uh, Transformers will be from now on, and I'm okay with it. But I think if you're trying to reimagine and reinvent a way to get kids to buy the toys again, and I think you're looking at collectors here an older audience which is fine i mean hell you want to make i I wouldn't be surprised if they make a cartoon version of transformers which is totally kid friendly real fun and campy and has nothing to do with the plot and the story and they'll interject things and like i said i've done deep dives on some of these stories and i've watched them even though i hate the art and i hate the kiddiness of it to, to an extent um I try to find the uh, the through lines, you know, what keeps me motivated and keeps me thinking about the lore. And I, again, bringing it back to my role playing online, it enriches it because I had to start my own timeline, my own continuity because there was uh, time space is, is fucked up. There was 17 branches of the Marvel, the Transformers universe. And I did that because of my deep dive looking at all these fucking things, you know, there's the Marvel comics, there's the Japanese storyline, is American, and then they go into uh, IDW comics, so I was like, look, this fu- everything's fucked up, and it, one of my characters had to go and retcon everything and become like the father of the Cybertronians, in a sense, so there's a new hierarchy, which I've explained, and I actually played last night with a friend of mine. So, we're looking at Transformers, War for Cybertron, Netflix, it's the uh, new thing to do, right? It's the uh, platform that's, um, you know, showing that it can stay around, even if it makes mistakes here and there. And I think War for Cybertron is going to be 
something that'll stand out. I and again, I'm a little surprised. I didn't think I wanted to deal with a show like this. I get it. Sometimes those twenty minute, thirty minute episodes start to grind on me. Like I need more, and even a whole season of only six episodes. I'm like, okay, where's the rest? However, I think it's done well. I think it tells enough of the story, it highlights enough of the characters. There's enough of the chemistry and the interactions between the characters that you feel. You feel the weight and the drain it takes on both sides. How they can kind of hint. We, I joke around with my friend, and I think they did the joke in the Bumblebee movie. But you're named Decepticons, okay? You, you know, the fucking name alone. So I was thinking of, um, because of the retcon I did in my world, just calling them something else. Like, uh, you know, whatever, I don't give away my trade secrets. <laughs> anyway, Wolf of Cybertron, Transformers on Netflix, season one. I really they're calling it Siege. Give it a shot. I'm a Transformers fan. I love it. I've been throughout... The whole history, I've done deep dives, I've watched some of the, or mostly every show, even the Japanese ones I've dared to try to get through, and reading all the plots and the things online. I'm enjoying the show, I think it's just enough, well done, and might be what today's fans will grow up on and really be... uh, you know, energized by and breathe life into the uh, franchise. Because the fucking movie shit the bed, in my opinion, except for Bumblebee, which, not a great movie, but it has those moments where I'm a kid again. Give War of Cybertron a chance. I hope everybody's doing well. Check it out on Netflix. I'm sure you could binge the whole first season. Be well, everybody, and take care.